What's up my friend, Abby here, and welcome back to Ask Abby, where I answer your writing questions and help you make your story matter. I hope you all are doing well today, and I hope your writing projects are going well. My writing project is going very well, and it's really odd feeling because I usually have like stopped like have usually finished the book by the time I reach this many words. I've reached about 90,000 words now and usually that's like I'm done with the book by now. It's like 70 to 80,000 words is usually my average word count but this book is definitely gonna be longer because I pretty much just reached like the midpoint and it's 90,000 words. <laughs> but it's kind of outside of my usual genre. It, I, I mean, it could be considered YA, but it's really not YA. It's more of a literary fiction. So yeah, I keep teasing about it here and there, but I haven't really released a bunch of information on it yet. Coming soon, coming soon, I promise. Until then, tell me, comment below and tell me right now, what are you working on at the moment and how is it going? And without further ado, let's get into the video. I have some great questions to answer today from you guys from the Inner Circle Facebook group and I can't wait to get to those. So roll that intro. Let's get started. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. In case you're new around here and don't know how this works, here's the deal. You post your writing questions in the Writer's Life Wednesday Inner Circle Facebook group, and every other week, pretty much, I come here on YouTube in a video to answer those questions. I usually choose like three or four questions each time, and um, to get inside this Inner Circle Facebook group, go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. All right, let's get to today's questions. First question is from Kathleen. I am just wondering how long a draft of a novel usually takes. I'm chronically ill and I also have a day job and things in general take me longer than they might take a normally abled person. I guess I'm having trouble measuring whether my progress is decent or not. I have been working on a novel for 10 months and I'm about halfway through, I think, halfway through a, a draft. That's a great question and it's a it's a frequently asked question. So first of all, I would just like to say 10 months is really not a long time, okay? It might feel like a long time to you right now, but it's really not that long as far as thinking about uh, writing a whole novel. The thing is this, every book is different and every writer is different, but every book, let's just start with book. Every book is different. I have written books in a really short span of time and then other books in a really long span of time. It depends on the length of the book. It also depends on the writing style of the book, the genre. For instance, when I wrote 100 Days of Sunlight, shameless plug, um, it took me, I think, 27 days to write the first draft. And that was like freakishly fast for me, okay? I don't usually write that quickly. Um, a book that I wrote for last NaNoWriMo was like at least six months. It may have been longer, but that's like full time devoting myself to the book, right? And this book that I'm currently working on is going to take me at least 10 months, if not more, to write this book because I've been, you know, my, my attention has been more divided with this book. I've been working on other projects at the same time, but I always love to stress the point with every writer who asks me this question and also with myself. I have to remind myself of this all the time. Any progress is good progress, okay? You're wondering if you were making decent, if your progress was decent or not, it is because all progress is good progress. If you are putting in the words and you're writing whenever you have the chance, then you're making progress and all progress in the right direction is decent progress, okay? So especially if you don't have a deadline for this book, like just let it come as it naturally comes. Um, I talked about this with my sister a lot and we've always discussed how uh, a work of art can't be rushed and it's better to enjoy the process and really enjoy the act of creating than to rush your way through it. You'll have more fun while writing it and you'll also have a better finished product. And it took Tolkien like 17 years to write Lord of the Rings. So 
there's that. <laughs> Okay, next question is from Sean. Hey everyone, I have a question for you all and ask Abby if she would like to. I have an idea for a gothic novella that I'm developing and I plan for my protagonist to have a negative character arc. I'm working on her misbelief and truth part of the backstory, but if it's a negative character arc, should I be writing this backwards so that she goes from a truth to a lie at the end? Any advice on negative character arcs in general? Thanks. That's a good question. I don't talk about negative character arcs a lot because <laughs> you know me, I'm like the positive character arc person, but there is a time and place for negative character arcs for sure. I really wanna make a whole video on this because I feel like it's a question that I've been asked quite a few times now and I would love to make a whole video devoted to it, but for now, I'll just try to keep it brief. So you would think that it would be as simple as just reverse engineering the normal positive character arc and starting with the truth and ending with where they are in the beginning of the story. But it's really more intricate than that, I would say. It has more to do with taking, beginning the story with a conflicted character, just like you do with a positive character arc, okay? You don't begin the story with them in a really negative place, usually. You begin with them conflicted, they're believing a misbelief, of course, and they have this inner conflict and external conflict in their life, but they're more at a conflicted state, and I talk about this with my, I'll actually show the chart right here on the screen, the three-act story structure character arc um, chart, showing that at the beginning of the story, when the story begins, your character is really in a conflicted state between positive and negative. They're not really all the way negative, but they're not all the way positive because they're not enlightened truly. So it's the same thing for your negative character arc, except instead of going on a journey to discover the truth, what they will do is go on a journey and then decide at long last, convince themselves that the lie is the truth. So in that case, you would replace the aha moment story beat for this character with a story beat where they finally fully embrace the misbelief as their truth, okay? And there's like no going back they've descended to the depths of despair. <laughs> Rather depressing, I know, but that's the negative character arc for you. But the thing is, the character arc, even if it's negative, kind of has to reach this climactic point. And if you took just the positive character arc and flipped it backwards, you would have the climactic part at the beginning of your story, and then it would kind of just go into a less climactic part for the end, which seems just backwards. It will feel backwards in your story. So I recommend instead of flipping it backwards, I recommend taking the positive character arc and just replacing a few story beats, okay? Every time they get deeper and deeper into trouble, they are more abrasive of their lie. And then at the aha moment, change that to a moment where they finally embrace their lie completely as the truth. Some disaster does not, it brings them to their knees and it brings them to this really dark moment, but it doesn't enlighten them. Okay, so that's really what you're aiming for. Okay, hopefully that helps a bit. I know that some other writers in the group also posted on your question and gave you some ideas and that's what I love so much about the Facebook group because you guys in there are amazing and you'll jump on these questions before I even get to them and like start this discussion and it's so great. I love hearing all of your thoughts. If you're not in the Facebook group, you are missing out. Okay, next question is from Kathleen again. I am one of those people who does much better writing in a coffee shop than my own home. Since COVID lockdown, I've been stuck at home and not getting much writing done. My family keeps talking to me. Whoever said men are uncommunicative never met my husband. <laughs> Any ideas? I feel like a bad writer for not being able to write equally well under all situations. Okay, well, first of all, it does not make you a bad writer, okay? Don't think you're a bad writer because you can't write under um, different situations or more stressful or chaotic or disruptive situations that is like every writer I have ever known and myself included. Like if there's a lot of noise and distractions happening around me, I cannot focus, okay? I just, I can't. So this is a very good question, very timely question. And I think probably a lot of writers are feeling like this right now as we're all kind of trapped in our own homes and there are some people and scenarios that you just can't get away from. First thing I would suggest, is a do not disturb sign. I know that seems so obvious and a few writers even said this on the post, but it is so, so helpful, literally. A do not disturb sign, it can be on your door 
or if you like have to be in the living room or whatever or wherever you're writing it can be on your body <laughs> i'm serious like that is the most emphatic way that you can tell people without having to stop and actually tell them do not disturb me and on your do not disturb sign you can write the time that people can disturb you. So if somebody needs to talk to you about something and you don't wanna be like totally rude by being like, I can't talk to you at all, get out. Then you can write on your sign a certain time of day that people can disturb you, okay? So figure out when you're gonna be writing and then figure out I'm gonna take a break, you know, at three o'clock or whatever. At three o'clock, you can talk to me. Let's meet then. <laughs> this might sound kind of like standoffish and rude, but it's really not. It's really not, especially for your family because they know you, they know that this is important to you. And if you explain to them why it's important to you and why you need to write undisturbed, I'm sure that they will respect the do not disturb sign. But the do not disturb sign still has to go up. Okay, even if you have that conversation, it still has to go up as a reminder because most people who interrupt you, they don't even think about it. They don't even realize that you're writing. They think you're just, you might be just looking at Pinterest for all they know. <laughs> That's what I'm doing half the time. So you need that reminder to let them know I'm writing. Another great way to ward people off is headphones, noise canceling headphones, preferably. Um, and the cool thing is that you can play, and somebody mentioned this in the, in the Facebook post, you can play coffee shop ambience in your headphones and then feel like you're in a coffee shop. My favorite website is ambientmixer.com. I go there all the time while I'm writing and just like put on my noise canceling feature on my headphones and then just put on whatever ambient background noise is in the scene of my book or sometimes a coffee shop. I haven't done a lot of writing in coffee shops, but the ambient noise of a coffee shop could make you feel like you're actually in a coffee shop. Life hack right there. <laughs> Alrighty, last question is from Sarah. What is the best way to introduce new characters, specifically three or more at once without the narrative slowing down? How do you keep reminding the reader of the new character's traits without beating it over their heads? <laughs> Struggling. Okay, that's a great question. And I've seen this in books before where it's not done right. And it is so annoying because it will get so, it will slow it down. Like you said, it will slow the narrative way down. There's like a particular book I'm thinking of where it was just like it would stop for like pages to explain the backstory of these particular characters who do not matter and what how they met and like all this stupid stuff that just slowed the story down and I was like why? Why? So yes, that's a great thing to pay attention to. What I would recommend doing, I do this all the time in my own writing and I've seen it in other books and I'm like that was well executed. Only pick like two or three of the most important traits of these characters. And when I say most important, I'm talking about things that it could be their physical appearance, but try to make the things actually matter to who they, who the characters are as a person. Now, physical descriptions can matter. They can tell you a lot about the characters. And actually I made a whole video right here about uh, how to describe characters. And I think you'd actually really like that video. That will probably help you a lot with this. But I would pick like two or three descriptions, uh, character traits, whatever that may be, whether it's physical descriptions or something in their behavior and their mannerisms, and only have those two or three appear in this first scene with these characters. And then in future scenes, when these characters are in different scenes, you can add in more of their character traits and maybe spend a little bit more time explaining them. But when a few characters are introduced right away, it does slow the narrative way, way, way down to go into all of their character traits, or at least a lot of them, or even full body descriptions. Like we don't need that, okay? We just don't. The most important thing for the reader to know is how this new character is related to or directly impacts the protagonist, okay? That's really all we need to know. Like if we know that, we're good. And then you can have a few character traits or descriptions, but I wouldn't go overboard with it or else it will slow your narr narration down. Okay guys, awesome questions awesome questions. I hope you got something valuable out of my replies today. And if you would like to ask a question in the Facebook group and have it answered here on YouTube, 
go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. Get yourself inside the Facebook group. It's an awesome community of writers just like you. I think we're really, really close to 200 members in that group, which is really exciting. It's grown to be such an awesome community of writers and I love, 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 love seeing all the support and encouragement in that space. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. All right, until next week, my friends, rock on. I was like, I can't sleep with you yelling. <laughs> Sorry, babe. She's so cute, she's just staring at me. <gasps> You wanna cuddle? Yes! Oh, Hi, say hi to YouTube. Oh, it's over there. See? Do you need a bath? Yeah. Yeah. Should this be the thumbnail, Pearl? Yeah, I think so too. This should be the thumbnail. <laughs>